And we are away, and we're in a... Not sure of the vehicle. I believe... Oh, I'm going to look at it when it gets close. It could be um, a Citroen. And we're in Kenya. And in a full muddy rainstorm. It's going to be hail. I actually crash and roll at once. I'm going to switch between some views so you can just... Inside. And it was very difficult to see where to go. There's not a lot of arrows set up. So you're just looking for the glare of the road and those little rocks. A lot of rocks on the road. Wow. This car was out of control. So much fun. Little villages. Wow. Almost crashed into the well there. <laughs> Just look how dark it is. So hard to see. But it's an all-wheel drive car. Handles great. Put a little brake pressure on. And a little trail braking will get you around most corners. No real drop-offs, but there are a lot of trees and rocks you can hit. I do believe I hit a rock where I rolled it three times. That's coming up in the later half. Wow. Oh, wow. This is so awesome. It teaches us so much. I actually use a Zamboni driving technique. It's all-wheel drive, just like Zambonis were. And if you ever get sliding sideways, and you think you're going to go off the course or uh, in a Zamboni into the boards, just slowly step on the throttle and point the wheels in the direction you want to go and we'll pull you that way with the all-wheel drive and that's kind of what I do here I'll turn the corner point the wheels and the feather on the throttle to bring it around the corner and pull it through that yeah, very uh, a lot of these techniques are uh, are transferable between a lot of different vehicles depending on whether they're rear wheel drive front wheel drive or all wheel drive and depends on the weight of the vehicle and the horsepower. A lot of these techniques are trans, uh, transferable, like I said, from a Zamboni to a rally car to a 4x4 to uh, an exotic car or a race car. And you pick up all those techniques that become second nature in your subconscious if you do a lot of rally racing. And you get into a rhythm. It's like a smooth rhythm. rhythm. Okay, here's the wide open section. I think I hit a big puddle coming up. Wow, just flying through that field. Wow, oh, got some air. Oh, there's a big puddle. Wow, almost buried me. Wow, look at this. Slow down, slow down. Whoa, sideways. Another puddle. Wow, the physics on this are just phenomenal. And I, like I say, it is tough seeing where you're going on this track. It's no little piece of cake here. There's nothing that's really labeled. Just these sh super sharp uh, obstacles or corners are. But these ones, none of them are labeled. And it's just in Kenya, open African tribal safari country. Whoa, almost hit that tree. I think that's where I almost flip it. Roll it like three times. It's got to be coming up here. Oh, what am I over here, baby? No. Wow, I get so close to those rocks. It's coming up, though. We're going to roll. Wow. Oh, my God. Hang on. Hang on. It's coming up. I think right here. Oh, no. Wow. Just flying. And it is actually arguably easier to... Oh, there it is. Roll. Wow! Oh my goodness! That was not good. I did not where to, know where to go, so it actually reset me on the track. That was intense. But I do finish this course, but arguably in the mud and the rain, it is sometimes a little bit more predictable to get in a, into a rhythm of sliding because the consistency of the ground is all even. It's like a mud. 
Anyways, there we go. That's my replay in Kenya in a, I'm not even sure of the vehicle, but I think it was a Citroen. But it was very intense. Duke out.